Hey, what's up guys? This is Queenly Vibes. Um, how's it going, everyone? So I'm on to talk about Netflix's, um, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, okay? Um, yeah, <laughs> so we got to chat about this. Um, it, it was pretty uh, devastating, shall I say. Um, yeah, so there's lots of, you know, to chat about as far as this, um, this, uh, you know, it's not a documentary, it's kind of like a, um, it's 10 episodes and season one of a story being told, um, from the point of view of, uh, Dahmer's neighbors, um, the 17 victims. Uh, their family members and everything um, is, is talking about um, white privilege, which it was definitely a lot of that going on, and how uh, the Milwaukee Police Department definitely dropped the ball in this situation where this could have ended, uh, you know, long ago. Okay, so yeah <laughs> we're we're gonna get into it and as i mentioned i um i watched this uh last week or well, over the weekend and shall i say it, it was it was horrific it was horrific but it was also really really uh well acted out you know so um all of the actors i thought did um, an excellent job, especially the starring actors. Um, the guy that portrayed Jeffrey Dahmer, um, I believe his name is um, Evan, um, which I've seen him in American Horror Story, and I, I watched season one. You know, don't judge me because, you know, at the time I was dating a guy that really loved American Horror Story and, you know, I did watch um, season one and, you know, and everything. And I remember the guy that portrayed Dahmer, you know, is um, he was in American Horror and everything. So the guy that... Um, Ryan Murphy, you know, his show is American Horror, what have you, but this was, it, it was quite interesting, and like I said, um, the guy Evan, he probably should receive some type of, um, you know, Oscar, you know, Oscar award, or what have you, along with Niecy Nash, and um, some of the other actors, it was really, really well put together you know this um this season um with the 10 episodes um in my opinion and again i'm gonna go over all of that or what have you um yeah so if you stop by my channel and everything um go ahead and like this video share the video and feel free to leave a comment okay and thanks again so, wow, like I said, I feel like ever since, ever since I watched it, I'm still like, wow, 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 wow. It was a lot of things that definitely had me on the edge of my, uh, my bed. You know, I, I screamed, I yelled, I cried. I felt like I was in the moment of every episode and everything, I felt like I was like right there um, trying to guide these guys um, out of these situations or what have you. I felt like, you know, and then let's talk about also um, just seeing it from every angle. You know, um, again, this is about uh, Jeffrey Dahmer who actually dismembered and murdered um, 17 
young men. Um, well, it was only, um, <laughs> but honestly, I feel like it, it probably was many more, but it's only documented as, you know, um, the 17 young men and everything. But I feel like, in my opinion, I just think it was many more because you know, the police department, they really, truly dropped the ball. I mean, you guys got to go and just watch this, um, uh, the 10 episodes and everything. I don't want to say documentary because it's, it's pretty much like a movie and everything, but it was just, it was so good because, um, again, we're seeing what, what the neighbors had to go through uh, Niecy Nash. She portrayed a woman by the name of Glenda Cleveland, who was the next door neighbor for, you know, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer at the apartments where he uh, lived in Milwaukee. Okay, and then we got to see uh, what happened in his childhood with his um, with his parents and everything. And you know, I had a lot of questions and everything when this went on um when he got caught and everything and this hit the news and you know it was all the talk of the town and everything and all around the world obviously um I just remember first of all I think I, I must have been about 17 or 18 at the time and um <clears throat> I just remember um, it was, you know, this white guy that was eating uh, young black men, you know, that he was a cannibalist and, and, you know, and all of that. And he was cooking and eating young black men. So I really didn't get that much into the story. Um, to find out all the details and, and all of that. Cause you know, like I said, I was um, teenager at the time. So it was, of course it creeped me out. It was weird. And I'm just like, you know, okay, here, here's another cycle here, but this is quite different. Okay. He's cooking and eating young black men. Like what, what the heck, what, what is up with this? You know, and then, um, you know, just finding out he was caught and just, you know, just the whole thing. I did see uh, the part in court where the young black woman, um, she was the sister of one of the victims. She stood up and she screamed at him because I they showed that on the news a lot, that part and everything. And he, he's just sitting there emotionless or what have you. Um, yeah. So, um, but now, <laughs> you know, that I'm older and everything, and I've seen, um, I did see the one movie, um, the interpretation of his, uh, friend or what have you, um, the one that he was in high school with, I saw that movie, so that was a different version of his childhood and what was going on with him at that time so I saw that it you know it kind of gave me a little insight but again this um show on Netflix or what have you it really went in great detail of everything uh that took place all of the questions were answered you know in this uh Netflix um you know the 10 episodes like everything you can think of if you watch this I feel like you know your questions will be answered because a lot of times what happens and I know for me when these psychopaths are out there and they do these things you know there's you know so many of them and like I said a lot of psychopaths uh, glamorize these guys and they you know they want to make them rock stars or whatever the case may be you know you have Ted Bundy you have uh, uh, John Gacy I think that's his name 
you know, you have, um, you know, there's, you know, a couple of more that, you know, are popular or what have you. My main thing for me, I can speak for me, I already know that there's, of course, demonic forces, you know, at play here, you know, sick in the mind and just allowing the enemy to just infiltrate their thoughts and just, you know, act out doing these sick things. But I guess I just really want to know where did, where did it, <laughs> excuse me, I just want to know where did it start? Like, who were their parents? How were they brought up? What were they taught? You know, did they go ever go to church? Do they did they know about Jesus Christ? You know, did they ever um, get taught the Bible or you know, just like what the heck happened in their childhood to just make them out act out these things or you know what I mean? Like to have these thoughts and then to actually act them out like what happened like who were their parents you know who raised these individuals okay so that's the first thing i always think about and i always feel like okay if something tragic happened to them maybe they were um you know molested abused or what have you and i think in some of the backgrounds some of this stuff has happened to them or what have you but there there's just no excuse there's no excuse you know so again it is a chilling um you know movie about <laughs> this 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 psychopath okay anyway so right away um episode one when it comes on um, it's showing the victim and his name is Tracy Edwards okay and see like I said back in the day I didn't know anything about the victims I didn't know you know um, his parents I didn't know a whole lot you know so anyhow and I you know and I had to do um, in watching this um, this uh movie and everything it you know i did some research or what have you and i and i just found out a lot and i'm like wow wow just really it it just left me just sad and angry just just all the things that took place because like i said this guy could have been stopped a while ago but definitely white privilege had a lot to do with it had he not been a white male that appeared to be normal, um, you know, appeared to be somewhat okay looking or what have you, he wouldn't have gone this far in, in his sickness, you know. So anyhow, yeah, it, it starts out um, his neighbor, you know, portrayed by Niecy Nash, and I'm pretty sure she's going to win an Oscar or something like that. Her and her and Evan, I mean, just superb acting. And you know, not only them, but all of the the actors involved. Just just phenomenal. Phenomenal acting. And you know, anyhow. <laughs> so she's having a conversation with him um about the smell, you know, in his apartment. And it was just so interesting to see all of this that she was his neighbor and she had this um, vent, um, you know, connected to his apartment and she can smell the foul odor. She can hear um, him on his, you know, hanging out and entertaining his guests and everything. And she was actually hearing drills, power tools, you know, screams. Um, oh, Oh my God. Oh my God. So <laughs> this is why I say, you know, you guys got to go check it out for yourselves because it, it was just, it was mind blowing, you know, to see that this is what his neighbors had to go through, you know, 
and I can only imagine um, the smell and everything because I'll never forget and I'm gonna finish my thought I'm I'm just like wow back in junior high school um, some it was a kid that was found dead on top of the roof and uh, the body of you know the student um, it was down a hallway where I had to go to um, it was like shop class you know or what have you and it was directed towards um, this hallway kind of in the on the right side of the school wing or what have you so as soon as you walk down that hallway you can just smell something that that you've never smelled in in your whole life at least I, I pray <laughs> no one uh, can smell something like this. It is the most foul odor. To smell a decaying, rotting, uh, dead body is, is one of the most foul odors you can, you can ever think of, okay? So, as soon as me and my classmates, we, you know, we had to go to that class, we, we hated it because it was such a, a foul odor come to find out uh, some student went up there and did some sort of drugs and was found dead up there junior high school so anyhow so I can imagine what uh, Glenda um, that smell coming from out of it there's no way I, I would have been able to sleep if I had to smell something like that on a consistent basis you know where I live <laughs> there's just no way I, I could have stayed there you know anyhow so um, you know and he's telling her oh you know he he had some bad meat in his freezer his freezer uh, you know wasn't working or whatever he always had an excuse you know and he he spoke in this mild tone and you know he always appeared to be you know like he's okay you know what I mean um, yeah he told her he, he had to throw out some meat or something or you know he was cooking something and things went bad it began to spoil or you know what have you and um, but this neighbor she really stayed on him and she she made complaints you know she made complaints to management you know all of that and all of the other neighbors you know but they mainly focused on um, the neighbor uh, Glenda Cleveland okay but it was you know like I said it was just so interesting to see him in his apartment and you know the neighbors okay and not only just the neighbors his parents you know how he was uh, raised how he was brought up uh, what was instilled in him what the heck happened you know it was good to see that his grandmother he lived with his grandmother for a little bit you know and he did some of the murders there at his grandmother's house you know like this this guy was really truly sick right you know <laughs> so and he had, um, from what the movie showed, um, he seemed to have a really sweet grandmother. He seemed to have a very caring uh, father that did all he could for him. At least this is um, what was shown. Um, I can only pray it was true. His mother definitely had um, issues, you know. Um, it appeared to be that she had uh, mental illness and you know maybe he had developed or inherited mental illness through her you know um, he was left alone a little bit it just I don't know it almost seemed as if um, his mother really just didn't love him properly you know and his father was was gone a lot due to work and all of that um, and no no excuses because um, 
I don't care if you were left, um, I don't know. I don't care who you were uh, left home with or whatever the case may be and shouldn't just push you to the, uh, to the point where you would want to act out these things in your mind and then and then actually you know acting act them out in reality you know what I mean like it shouldn't have been anything going on that would make you want to do something so horrific you know and if you're if you're having some sort of psychotic thoughts as such get help you know and there was this one time um, you know because he and his um, his parents uh, they divorced and everything and he started dating uh, someone else that he married or what have you which was actually portrayed by Molly Ringwald I loved her in the 80s she was 80s queen and everything um, he tried to tell him that you know he was having these thoughts or what have you and his father cut him off and um, I think that's when he got him into the into the college at Ohio State and everything but he actually was he was kind of sitting there kind of rambling and trying to explain to him you know he's like dad I'm you know I'm having these thoughts and blah 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 but again I don't know his dad seemed to just try his best with him you know at least this is what was portrayed but you know when I actually you know I saw an interview with the real dad and you know I don't know I just saw some things there that just seemed a bit strange even even with, with his dad I know there were allegations of molestation from his father but you know I don't know if that was proven to be true or what have you but definitely in my opinion his father seemed really strange and then his mother had you know some mental issues you know and then in the um, in the movie his father you know after everything was said and done and you know I'm kind of just jumping around but anyhow after he was caught and everything was was found out his father made a confession saying that um, he actually would have these thoughts as well you know what have you so I don't know he seem to you know be saying that maybe he inherited that from him so I don't know but at the at the ending of the day you know nothing should make you go that far and do you know such horrible things I mean you you just have to be a special type of sick you know and then Dahmer he you know he said oh you know he wasn't crazy or what have you he just it's just what he wanted to do and I, I just I pretty much believe that I just think he did what he wanted to do he didn't have any remorse he didn't care he had these six sick thoughts and this is what he did um also I oh my gosh I just had another point oh yeah they you know after he was you know murdered and everything um, in jail his mother wanted to save his brain to find out did he have some sort of illness or whatever the case may be I don't know but in my opinion I think they should have did some research on his brains you know just to see if there was anything there that made him that way you know that's just my opinion I think they should have just at least you know maybe answer some questions maybe you know that could have just I don't know brought more cl um, closure uh, to the uh, family members you know of the victims and all of that and just to the world who knew about this story and, and you know just want to say why 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 okay but you know so that didn't happen or what have you and they also tore down the apartments and all of that which I felt definitely that was a good idea because who, who could live there after that like there's just no way who the heck is going to live in apartment 213 you know where that happened like or just live there in the apartment building you know in general and then there was something weird um, 
that happened with a guy that moved in there or whatever. He was new to the to the building. He hangs out and becomes friends uh, with Dahmer. He's never seen again. And I also feel like he was another victim. So this is why I, you know, I said it's to me, it, I'm pretty sure it was more than 17, right? But anyhow, I, <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, back with the first episode and I'm not gonna go through all 10. I'm just kind of, you know, just saying whatever comes to mind, but it was, it was absolutely electrifying just the first episode alone I mean I was screaming I was yelling for this guy to get away I didn't you know because again I didn't know that this was the victim uh, Tracy Edwards that got away I had no clue so I'm just thinking that you know Dahmer somehow was just gonna overpower him kill him do you know just whatever but this guy, you know, he had to fight. And then this, you know, this maniac, he had about 10 locks on his door. So, you know, he's fighting to, to get open the locks. It, it, it was just a whole thing. And I, I was just like, oh, my God, I was screaming. I'm like, no, get away, get out, get out, get out. Anyhow, he goes to get the police and everything. He did escape. You know, after all of this weird sickness, you know, Dahmer is telling him he's going to eat his heart. He had, he was listening to his heartbeat and all of that and just sick, sick, sick. And he had this thing of, you know, watching the movie, The, um, the Exorcist and um, <laughs> just just mind blowing, just sick, 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 sick. Anyhow, thank God that this guy, you know, wasn't drugged because of how a lot of him luring his victims, um, he would offer them uh, money and everything. And he was always targeting, you know, younger men. And, you know, he, and like I said, when I was a kid, I didn't know that, you know, he was homosexual or what have you. And he was going to the gay bars and picking up men and all of that. And this movie shows his lifestyle, you know, and the things that, you know, he he did and how he met these uh, young men. And he would offer them money, you know, to uh, take their picture and all of that. So then when he would, you know, uh, get them alone, he would make them a drink and you know, drug them and everything. So that's what he did. He was a psychopath. He wanted to have um, what he called a a human uh, zombie. He wanted someone in a zombie state uh, to be his lover and never leave him, you know. And then he also was fascinated with performing lumbotomies. You know, he wanted to, you know, he uh, drilled holes in some of their brains and poured acid in the brain and you know what he did to that 14 year old kid and the police officers they sent him back with him I I screamed I, I was just I was having a fit all throughout the whole 10 episodes I literally I was I was having a fit you know and again you know, I, I felt really bad for his grandmother. I did feel bad for his father. You know, again, like I said, um, his real life father, he, he seemed definitely weird to me, but how he was portrayed in this movie, I felt compassion for him. You know, um, his mother, I, I was, you know, livid with her to be able to treat her her child that way but she seemed to love the you know his brother so I couldn't understand why she had love for the younger brother and didn't just love and nurture him you know her her firstborn son I, I just couldn't understand it and I was just thinking I'm like well maybe if he would have had more love maybe if he would have had a better uh, mother maybe if his father spent more time with him 
but you know um his father saw that he was interested at a young age with um you know doing all the taxidermy stuff you know with the dead animals and you know and all of that and like i said if that would have been handled um differently if he didn't turn it into be something so horrific and grotesque and you know do these things and have that to take that experience in other words from a kid with the taxidermy and turn that into something so horrific and evil as an adult he could have you know who's to say maybe been a, a doctor scientist or something like that I, you know he, he really could have done great things with that but instead he took it and did just he was just evil he was just an evil evil wicked individual okay okay let me breathe and calm down <laughs> you know because wow 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 and you know again you know being a mother I can just I just wouldn't want to imagine what these mothers and, and fathers had to go through and everything um, you know again and then they showed the one guy that he dated um, that was deaf, you know, and um, the actress Karen Molina White, she portrayed his mother. She's the actress from back in the day that was on Lean on Me, Different World and all of that. So it was good to see her. She did a fantastic job. But even the guy that portrayed the deaf guy was very handsome, you know, and everything. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know, like I said, I, I can't express enough how sick this guy is, but you know, if you guys want questions answered that you didn't know before about this case, go ahead and watch this uh, Netflix 10 episode story, movie, whatever you want to call it, and I feel like a lot of your questions will be answered, and my condolences uh, to the family members, uh, words can't express, um, you know, my sympathy, my empathy for each and every one of you, and my prayers are still with you all today. It doesn't matter that, you know, this was in the 90s. I still pray for each and every one of you, um, you know, the family members that are left behind and everything, and also to uh, the neighbors who live, you know, in the same building as Dahmer, you know, uh, my prayers are with you and everything. Um, God bless you all. Um, and again, you know, I, his parents, you know, hey, you got to answer to God and all of that. Um, anyways, I thought the I thought it was uh, acted out really well, so thumbs up, it was really, really good, but you know, at your own risk, <laughs> you know, go ahead and, and watch it, and uh, so yeah, that's my, my review of this, you know, I got very emotional, I'm, I'm still feeling emotional, because I'm thinking about it and everything, um, so yeah, it was really, really good, um, Evan, he's, he's so uh, good looking but he would really scare me I don't think I would want to date him in, in you know in, <laughs> in everything it's a really cute guy and all but he portrayed this role a little bit too well for me he was superb um, yeah uh, maybe he might need some counseling <laughs> you know with this role because it, it was a lot but anyhow go check it out guys and um I'll be back next time. Go ahead and like this video, share it, leave a comment. Take care. Peace.